our good religious laws, though it may happen that they agree on 80% of them with yourself, um, I don't expect likewise for anyone to um, necessarily um, you know, want those laws imposed on anyone else. I certainly don't. So if anyone misunderstood, by the way, when they had the little talk about Sharia law, um, that I somehow would condone a government court recognizing <coughs> such laws in this country, no way. But I wouldn't want them doing that with Levitican law either. And that's the point. Respect for each other's rights. If we establish the notion of freedom of religion, then it means a person who is a Christian should be able to be a Christian, live as a Christian, practice their moral code, marry as a Christian, and likewise, if a person wants to be a Muslim, they should be able to do that as well. That's all I have to say. And I don't know why that is controversial. Because, again, if we look at what the role of the Constitution is, what the government is, within your charter, I don't see it as controversial. In fact, I see just the opposite. To deny that would indeed be a conflict with that charter and what I see there. Um, and now, other ways of pointing out this idea I call moral consistency here is I have a couple other ways that it's been expressed, and they're very brief. This one is from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, and also Luke 6, 31. I'm not sure which part I ended up putting in here. Um, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, a.k.a. the golden rule, as it's kind of more commonly known. The idea of fairness, that if you would like someone to respect your rights to your behavior, that you respect their rights to theirs. Um, Immanuel Kant put it a different way when he was writing his philosophy. Act only according to the maxim whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law. In other words, if I'm going to say that based upon some general principle I should be permitted certain rights, or that those rights, in fact, are, are unalienable and God-given, then I have to say those are unalienable and God-given for everybody, not just me. Um, so, um, this, let me see where else we say. <laughs> um, so that also then carries over to one of the, the other points that a lot of people really were bothered by, and um, by my view, and then also a lot of people seem to endorse someone else's view, who, can, who um, diametrically disagrees with me on this. And that was um, people being able to define their own marriage. I frankly think that it is not in the interest of um, religious people or religious institutions to have the government um, usurp any of the authority they have within um, their community. And for instance, already we have a case where churches used to be the main source of education, of charity, and so forth. And there was never any issue about being able to say a prayer before the hungry came to eat and you had a charitable meal, or in a school, or being able to hang Ten Commandments on the wall or anything. None of that would come up because it was not the government's venue. As soon as one brought the government in, you brought all the other baggage that's attached to the government in. And I likewise see that in the institution of marriage. I don't see why we need the government to define marital relationships. And um, so it's just the same thing again. Now, frankly, I mean, to put it another extreme way, just imagine what it would be like to find yourself in a country where you are forced, if you're going to get married, you can only marry a member of the same sex. That would be, now granted, the country may not last very long for biological reasons, but um, just as, as offensive as that sounds, just imagine sounding exactly the same way to someone who's gay, that they may only marry a member of that other sex that they have as much attraction for as you have for your own sex. That sounds repulsive. And, um, so that's why I hold the view I do. And I, again, I'm not sure why it's so controversial. Um, but what I will do is I hope to find out. And so I'm hoping that you can tell me maybe a few things to explain why I'm not seeing this. And also that I would like to quote 
propose one more thing. A lot of people might say, why are you bringing up all the unpopular issues when obviously you can agree on, and it's true, I probably agree with everybody here on 80% or maybe 90% of your opinions on a whole bunch of issues. But, um, you know, obviously I brought up a couple that maybe I don't have so much agreement with. But why would I stick to the unpopular ones? Well, I'm going to read a quote by Pastor Martin Niemöller, and this was um, written following or in the midst or tail end of World War II. Um, first they came for the communists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for. 